pre-calculus first mid nine weeks common assessment 2020. For those of you who followed my video lessons over the past five years since I started this channel, you see my test reviews feature the TI Inspire calculator. Well, at my new school, we are featuring the TI 84 series calculator, so that's going to be a key difference should you be checking. 18 problems total. We're going to do these whenever possible, graphically and analytically. One, what is the domain of the function f of x equals x over x minus 3? I'm going to go to graphically first where I can. And so I get my PI 84 CE emulator. And to graph this, I'm going to create a fraction by pressing alpha y equals enter. I'm going to put in here x over x minus 3. And I hope you'd be able to do this problem without having to uh, graph. But right here at x equals 3, I hope you can see there is an infinite discontinuity or vertical asymptote. And to verify that that is in fact a discontinuity, if we press second graph, we get to our table view. And we see here squarely where x is equal to 3, y1 has an error because the function is not defined for x equals 3. That being the case, uh, negative 3, or 3 being our critical value, that is going to leave b as the correct answer. And analytically, what that looks like is, since the denominator cannot be equal to 3, if we set x minus 3 not equal to 0, and we solve by adding 3 to both sides of inequality, x cannot equal 3. That's an analytical description. So that gives us two pieces, and b, therefore, is our correct answer. So the function g of x equals x squared over x times 20x minus 1 times 20x plus 3, what are the exclusions to the domain? Now, exclusions, what does exclusions mean? Exclusions mean uh, what the value of the domain cannot be. So we're looking at for exceptions to all real numbers. I'll do this analytically, but first I'm going to go to the uh, graphing calculator. And here we have it. Y equals. I'm going to turn this thing off here and go down to Y2 and get a fraction again. And then we're going to put in the numerator x squared. And the denominator we have x times quantity x minus 1. Close parentheses, open parentheses, x plus 3. This is also rather easy to do analytically. But we press graph and uh, we should be able to see we have a vertical asymptote where x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. And so we know that x can, that x equals negative 3 and x equals 1 are exclusions to the domain. So we go over here and everything without negative 3 and 1 in it, here we do not have negative 3 and 1. Uh, here we have negative 1 and 3. So we're down to these two. And by appearances, from what we see, uh, we would have to go with, with A because that's where we see the vertical asymptotes. But not so fast. There is one um, exclusion to the domain that is unseen using the graphing calculator. So let's go look at this. Where do we find uh, an exclusion to the domain that is unseen? Well, perhaps we can see it when we go to the table view. And we have, you see here, an error for x equals negative 3. We already got down where x equals 1. But also, we have an exclusion domain where x equals 0. And this is going to be what is called a non-removable 
or excuse me, a removable discontinuity. And graphically, we know we cannot divide by zero. So if we take this whole denominator and set it uh, not equal to zero, we know by zero factor property, this inequality is true if any one of these single factors is also not equal to zero. So if x cannot equal zero, x plus x minus one cannot equal zero, and finally x plus three cannot equal zero. And so these equations will define our exclusions to the domain. Well, we already see that we have x cannot equal zero, and on this one here, x minus one not equal zero, means x cannot equal one if we add one to both sides of the inequality, and finally x cannot equal negative three. So this is a graph, this is a analytical look at working out this problem, finding C is a correct answer. Three, which of the following graphs is not that of a function? Well, we have, perhaps you learned about something in your uh, math career. We certainly covered it this year in our pre-calculus class called the vertical line test. This A fails the vertical line test. All these others, B, D, C, pass the vertical line test. Therefore, A is our correct answer. Now, four, which type of discontinuity will not likely be seen when examining a graph view and a graphing calculator? Well, we had a perfect example of that when we were back at problem two. We looked at the graph, oops, oops, get that. Problem two, we, we graphed it last, and I think in four, if I'm not mistaken, was, okay, well, we'll, we'll just go look at this bit. Okay, we'll go look at this, and we look at the graph, and see, we do not see represented the, the infinite discontinuities and non and removable discontin non removable discontinuities at negative three and x equals one came out as vertical asymptotes, but at zero that is a removable discontinuity, a hole or a point discontinuity, which makes D our correct answer for problem number four. Next five. Uh, what is the domain of function f of x equals 2 times 20 square root of 4 minus x? Again, we're going to look at this graphically and then analytically afterwards. So we go to our calculator. We'll go to y equals. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. Enter. We have 2 times quantity second y equals, we're going to have 4 minus x. And then we graph this function, and this is what we get. We see that we are going, it looks like coming from negative infinity, going all the way to x equals 4. Uh, the only question in this is, is uh, x actually going to be equal to 4, or is it going to be less than 4? Well, to, to answer that question, we can go to table view. And we can see that, yes, the function does, is defined, does exist where x equals 4, but greater than 4, we have nothing but errors. So that could tell us that we're going to have a closed bracket. All right, so that's what it's going to be like. Now, analytically, this is one that's very simple to do analytically. We know that the radical 4 minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And so if we, well, we can do this different ways. One thing I'm going to do is keep the unknown on the left. So if I four from both sides, we have negative x is greater than or equal to negative four. If we divide by negative one, we have x. Now we divided by a negative number, so we have to switch the direction of the inequality and so we get x is less than or equal to 4, which translates to answer choice 
B. And yeah, you, over here, solving the, this inequality, you can also add x squared to both sides. Look that out. Okay, which function is increasing for all real numbers? Well, you can just kind of go over what would be okay, negative x. You're actually decreasing for all real numbers. Uh, 1 over x is the reciprocal function. You're decreasing for all real numbers. Uh, this f of x equals square root of, I mean, absolute value of 2x over x. You're going to be, uh, I think the thing comes like this, constant to right here and down here at negative 2, like a jump discontinuity. Not decreasing, not increasing for all real numbers. This one right here, f of x equals cube root of x, this is the one that is increasing for all real numbers, and it looks like this. And I hope you knew that function, we're familiar enough to know it, but if not, what can you do? Go to your graph and calculate it. And here, I'm going to come down to turn that one off and go over to cube root of x. And where do we find that? Well, we can we can take x to the one third power, but another handy thing is we can take math and go down here to option four in the, the math submenu, hit four. And there we have the square root of x and the cube root of x. Press uh, graph. And uh, we can see that we are, uh, the function is increasing as we go from left to right for all x. Therefore, a is our correct answer for number six. Number seven, the graph of f of x, or which statement about the graph of f of x is true? A one, f of x is decreasing on negative two to three. Now, one thing you have to know is saying when you're decreasing on, what are you talking about? Well, you're talking about evaluating which x values. So if we look at x equals negative three, negative two, right here, and then at x equals three. Okay, I hope you can see that the function, the graph function is decreasing all the way over that interval. And what that does, it makes uh, A our likely candidate. Now, next B, kind of, you still go through and try to eliminate uh, X is increasing on negative 3 to 1. Well, you're increasing here from negative 3, but you're going to be decreasing over this interval here. Uh, f of x is decreasing on 3 to 8. Well, here's 3 to 8. Well, that's actually increasing. So if you happen to read this backwards, you would perhaps choose answer choice C. Uh, finally, f of x is decreasing on 5 to 3. Well, here's 5. Well, it's decreasing on 5 to 3, but it doesn't makes sense because what you're doing is this is an improper interval expression. You're going to properly express intervals by going from smaller number to larger number. So D doesn't make sense. A is the answer that makes the most sense in this particular problem. Eight. So the graph of the function g of x shown below, where is a relative ma maximum for the function observed? Well, we have a relative minimum here at x equals zero, but we have this peak is a re represents a relative maximum, and we go up here. And it says it says uh, where. Well, where means what? Well, where or when means x value. So you're looking for the x value where the relative maximum is observed. Now, that particular relative maximum is going to be y equals 5, but the where has to do with the x value where that occurs, which is going to be right here where x equals 4. So x equals 4 is the correct answer. Now, when you look at the word what, what 
you got to read carefully, but what usually means the Y value, but where and when usually mean uh, X value. Okay, nine, which following functions is a parent function? Basically, the parent function is the simple, bare bones version of a function. And a parent function is not going to possess a negative sign, is not going to possess a number two a coefficient anywhere. It's going to be the simple version, in this case, 1 over x, which is the reciprocal parent function, which can be written with x to the negative 1 power all the time. Okay, so that should be pretty simple. 10, a vertical asymptote is what kind of discontinuity? Basically, it's like I showed you on that uh, discontinuity t-shirt. Yes, non-removable. Is vertical asymptote a point discontinuity? No, that's not. That was like problem two. Is a vertical asymptote a jump discontinuity? No, it is not. Is a vertical asymptote a removable discontinuity? If you look at A and D, okay, one is non-removable and, and one choice is removable. So just logic would tell you that it's probably going to be a, a between answer choices A and D because that, that would include about 100% of your types of discontinuities. But in this case, uh, vertical asymptote is a non-removable discontinuity. 11, for the function f of x equals x cubed plus 1.5x squared minus 6x over what interval is the function in decreasing? And then what interval are we talking about x values or y values? x values. So over which x values is the graph of this function here decreasing? And we're going to go back to our graphing calculator. Y equals, I'm going to go turn off this one here. When I just turn off the equal sign, what I'm doing is I'm telling the calculator not to register that. And we have x cubed. And we have plus 1.5x squared. And we have minus 6x. And so let's, before I graph, let me take a look at it again, or which, what intervals is the function decreasing. OK, graph. So we are decreasing from this peak up here on the left side of the y-axis to this valley here on the right side of the y-axis. If we can trace to find that, if we trace, we can get on the function and I can go left and get near the top. And right here we're at negative 1.8, negative 1.97, negative 2. So about negative 2. And if we go to uh, down to see to where it goes, we have x equals 0.909, x equals 1.06. And yeah, we can friendly window this thing pretty easily. If I can go to, let me show you, go to window, I'm going to put negative 4.7 and then 4.7 here. You can see this come right out on the even numbers. Watch this graph. And then we go to trace. And I'll let you know about those friendly windows on the TI-80. It's not working for this one because of the higher resolution of this type of calculator. But see, we get pretty close to, to negative 1.9. So what I was suggesting is perfect for the TI-84 plus or TI-84 plus silver edition calculators, but doesn't exactly apply. I have to learn more about this. But we can see that x equals 0.99. We're right at the top. So we'll, we'll find those maximums and minimums. But we are, oops, here we are from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1. 
12, which of uh, the following represents the end behavior for a function f of x equals 1 over x? We've got a lot of problems involved in this reciprocal function, haven't we? The parent function, it's a basic rational function. So this is what the graph of that thing looks like. So that's what it looks like as x approaches infinity, we're going to go toward y equals 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals 0. And in the calculator, y equals, I'm just going to use this one up here. Let me go down here and erase, turn that one number 5 off. I'm going to go back to 1 over x here. So we put 1 here, down the denominator. Go to 3. Okay, here we have 1 over x. So there we are. Okay, as x approaches infinity, y approaches 0. That is our correct answer for this one. The 13. For function g of x equals x cubed plus 1.5x squared minus 6x minus 2, what is the relative minimum function? What and relative minimum? These are both pieces of vocabulary that indicate y values. And you kind of look for corroboration in the text. And let's go back to that. We entered one that was very much like that. And why do you to turn this off? What happened is equation number five here is very much like for this problem, except at the end we have minus two. Otherwise, it's the same thing. So what we're going to do is graph this function, and what is the minimum? I'm going to, I'm going to give the, get the exact minimum. If you go to second, trace, you choose three, minimum, and then it says left bound. And so what you do is you look for your cursor to be to the left side of that minimum, which in this case it is. It's right on the y-axis. So you press enter. And then we have a question right bound, so we can just arrow over to the right. And as soon as we get to the right of this valley here, we press enter again. And it says guess. We enter for a third time. And we have our minimum, where x equals 1.00012, is negative 5.5. So negative 5.5 is our correct answer for this. It is not 1 where the minimum occurs is at 1, but the, the value of the relative minimum is negative 5.5. 14, which of the following functions is bounded? Again, this is one of the ones we covered when we went over parent functions of uh, last week. And we go to right here. I'm going to go bound it right here. I'm going to go to y equals. I'm just going to make this into sine x, close parentheses, and I'm going to delete, delete, Let's see, delete, delete, delete. And press close parentheses, graph. So we should see the, the boundedness here. We can see it better if we change our window to our y minimum being maybe negative 2 and y maximum being 2. should be able to see the undulation better. The graph, and there we see it, the blue one. Let me get rid of that. That's confusing us here, that number 5. Let me go turn that thing off. There we go. Now I graph. The graph It's easier to see boundedness. So we have a bounded function. Next, 15. The rational function f x equals 5x squared minus 6x plus 7 over 
which we put in X equation what marginal asymptote is. There is an analytically way, analytic way to do this, but let's just go to graphing and I will show you that. Again, we go to Y equals, and I'm going to I'm going to take advantage of this thing right here, alpha Y equals. And so I'm going to enter the numerator, which is 5X squared. And then we have minus 6X plus 7. And then down the denominator, we have 2X squared plus 10X. And, and graphing the function this is what it looks like. Okay. I really don't see anything below. But there's a piece that is below somewhere. But we're interested as we go toward pause infinity and toward mega infinity. What I'm going to do is go back to the zoom standard. I think we're going to see more of the function that way. Yeah, we see a left piece and then a middle piece and the right piece. So as we go toward negative infinity or positive infinity, that would be a value of a horizontal asymptote. One thing we can do is we can plug in values for a very high value for x or a very low value for x, like thousands or something like that. Uh, one way you can do this, if we go to if we go to second window, which is table set, we can start our table at a very high number, like 1,000. Okay, and we'll see what happens. We'll go to table view, and we can see, if you can see that these numbers here, 2.4846, 2.4847, these numbers are getting close to, uh, we can go to another, we can put in 100,000, see what we get. Okay, second, enter, see. Four nine. <laughs> okay, we're getting very close to 2.5, and 2.5 is a decimalized version of of five over two. Basically, what you can do is you can look at your highest power uh, terms on the numerator and denominator, and basically your answer is going to be the coefficients of these one over the other. So you'll have five over two. That's an analytical way of looking at it. Next, 16. The function h of x equals x times 20x minus 1 times 20x plus 3 contains how many discontinuities? Well, when you graph this, you're looking like uh, problem number 2 that we did quite some time ago. And let's see if I still have that thing up and running someplace. Uh, yeah, I do, except let me go turn this one off here. Except I think that we're going to have, there it is, x. There we go. So that's what it looks like. So we graph this function, and we see we see two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. So we see two there, but there's a third also because you know, I need to change my table set again. I'm going to go to zero. Okay. We have a discontinuity where x equals negative 3, a discontinuity where x equals 0, uh, and also one where x equals 1. How many is that total? That would be a total of 3. So we have three discontinuities. So if we enter 3, now if you just enter 3, that implies a positive number, but you can also circle in the positive, and then you would bubble in this 3 grid below. If you just entered 2, you probably just look at the graph of this. But again, like I showed in problem number 2, we have x times 20x minus 1, times 20x plus 3, cannot equal zero, and you're going to end up with three discontinuities there. Seven, 17, the elevation of the feet of a ball thrown in the air is given by the function of f of t equals 6 plus 8t minus 16t squared, which is the number of seconds. And we can go to evaluate this with our calculator. Go here, and I'm going to, I'm going to go turn off this guy here. 
and go up, enter this function here, and I'm going to put in 6 plus 88x minus 16x squared. And when we graph this function, this is what we, we get. And we're really not seeing the top. So I'm going to constrain this graph a little bit. And I'm going to narrow the window from like 0, x equals 0, to x equals 6. And then I'm going to choose a y maximum of 150 feet. I just happen to know that will be enough. Graph. So this is what the thing looks like. And we can trace and find the top. If I'm going to do two things. I'm going to trace. So I trace. I'm at the very top. Here's 126. And then we're going to test other values. And we'll go over to the left. And I hope you can see that we're getting we're getting right up there at 127 as your correct answer. I got a lot of people who answered 126 as your as a correct answer. That's, that's not the right answer. Also, you can go to second, trace, and you can go to four maximum, and you uh, arrow over to the left, which says left bound, enter that, uh, go to the right of your maximum, enter that, and then enter a third time, and we get y equals 127. So y equals 127 is going to be the value of our maximum. What is the maximum elevation? So I'm going to put in here 127, and here we have 127. And again, a negative sign not needed. 126, in this case, is not the correct answer because 126 is not to the nearest foot. You need 127 to be to the nearest foot. 18, the last one. For the equation, y equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 18. Where is the maximum located? And where is a word that indicates x value? What is the x value where the maximum of the graph is located? Well, we go to our calculator again. And y equals, I'm going to just clear this and enter negative x squared. Negative x squared minus 10x minus 18. And we graph this. I'm going to go to the zoom 6 for a zoom standard. And we should see right over here at the left. Okay. And so for that, I'm going to I'm going to use the second trace maximum four. Again, it says left bound. So I'm just going to arrow over here to the left of that peak. And we'll go press enter. And then right bound, arrow to the right. Press enter. Press enter a third time. And so we get y equals 7. That is the what is the y value, or what is the value maximum, but where it occurs is this negative 4.99999. That's an error. Round off to negative 5. So negative 5 is our correct answer for this one here. So we're going to enter negative 5. I'll put the negative sign up here. There we go, negative 5. So that's it. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Yeah, good luck in your future tests and endeavors. And as always, thanks for being here.